how's it going? My name is Zach Siri and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Solidus custom theming. What do we mean by custom theming? Well, in the previous episode, we took a look at installing Solidus and, uh, you know, we got it all set up and running and uh, we took a look at the default theme that comes pre-installed with Solidus. But in this episode, what we really want to do is start to customize, emphasis on the word start to customize. There's a lot of concepts we're going to cover in this episode because there's a lot to, to do. I mean, you have to understand the folder structure and all that. So I'm going to be going through all that with you guys today. Now, let's take a look at what we're going to try and accomplish in this episode over here. So as you can see here, I've got Twitter Bootstrap installed and I've got the Twitter nav bar up here. Uh, so, you know, it's not complete. So we're trying to do like a slow transition from here. Uh, to here, uh, you know, I like to have everything customized my way. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out today how we're going to customize, get Bootstrap installed and have everything set up so that we can write our own front end code and leverage the Solidus back end for doing all the other stuff. And then if there's any back end stuff we need to customize, how do we do that? We'll take a look in this episode right over here. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. So let's hop right into code. Uh, I'm gonna hop in over here. Um, this is the default generated Rails app that we get. And uh, what we wanna do is, uh, first of all, take a look at the Solidus source code. So let's go over here and look at the front end over here and go into the apps folder, views, and look at the spree folder over here. Now, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to try and override this uh, layout file over here. So what do I mean by this uh, override? Well, what we want to do is, you know, this is a template that's generated by Spree. Like this is what the guys at Spree or, or uh, Solidus have, have used. So what we want to do is like take a look at how we can set up the folder structure in our application uh, to override this stuff so we can write our own custom uh, layouts. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go into here. So this is the, the Solidus code base that I cloned from GitHub. I'm gonna do a copy over here. And what I'm gonna do is the way it works is uh, you have to create a corresponding folder and file in your project and Solidus will automatically pick that up and use the one that you customized instead. Straightforward, right? Let's go for it. So here I'm gonna create a new folder called Spree. And then I'm gonna create a new, um, then in the lay, in the spree folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called layouts. So as you can see, it's gonna separate your actual Rails app from everything that you do that is spree related, which is great. It's very clean. So you have everything compartmentalized and all separate. So here I'm gonna create a file called spree application. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste this into here. Now let's test if, uh, if that's worked. So what I'm gonna do is, is here in the body tag, I'm gonna add a test class. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, go over into the terminal, sorry, in the browser, go into here and do a reload. So now if I do inspect element, I should see the test class here. And there you go, it just worked. So that's great. We have um, a means of overriding and customizing the layout now. Uh, so what shall we do next? Well, um, if we take a look at the Solidus folder structure, we'll see here there's quite a lot to, to override. But let's dig in a little bit. Over here on the index, this is the home page. This is how the products page gets rendered out, the, all the products that you see in the browser over here. So that's how it all gets rendered out. So you'll see here, there's a content for sidebar and uh, rendering of some sort for uh, taxonomies. And what taxonomies are, are these things over here on the side. They're like categories and brand. It's how you can like, you know, sort out your products. You can put them into categories and, you know, sort them out by brand, group them by brand. Um, so that's what we call taxonomies. Now, I, Personally, what I have in mind is I don't want to have the taxonomies on the left-hand side. I want to um, make the taxonomies the main, the, as, at least the, the top-level category, but we'll get to that later. What I want to accomplish here is just get the top nav bar installed. 
So to do that, um, we have to take a look at the structure of our layout. So let's go over to the layout in here. Oh, so this is the file that we copied. Uh, we'll go and look at, at our copy, uh, the one that we copied before. And we'll see here that it's rendering the head header partial. And if I comment that out, we'll see here, uh, if I do a reload real quick, we'll see that it all the header stuff just disappeared. Now, what that means is for us to do any customization, we have to um, do the customization in the header partial, which is located in the spree shared folder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a folder called shared. So I'm gonna go here, shared. And then what I'm gonna do here is create a partial called header. So new file, header.html.erb. Right, here we go. So, and then I'm gonna head back to the Solidus project and just copy the stuff that I want to customize. So I'm gonna go over here, look at the header, copy that. And then what I'm gonna do here is uh, just put that into my header that I just created. All right, there we go. So now we have our own header file that we can customize. What I'm gonna do here is just comment all this out, including the ERB tags as well. What I want to do is have my own nav bar. I'm going to start with a simple, basic bootstrap nav bar. Um, so let's go over here. So here we have a sample. So what I'm going to do is just going to copy all of this stuff from here, head over into here and then paste my nav bar. Now this is not going to work yet because you know, this is just the HTML and the, and the CSS and the classes, but we don't actually have Twitter bootstrap installed in here just yet. So let's tackle that next. So if I do a reload real quick over here, it's gonna still use the old style. And as you can see here, it's this is not the bootstrap style. This is the style that came with Solidus. So now how do we overwrite that? Now, the way we override the CSS and the JavaScript is very much the same as what we did with the views. So if I head over to the Atom, I go into the assets folder, JavaScripts, I can create a new folder now called spree. So new folder, spree. And if I take a look at the source, so view, uh, developer view source, we can see that, uh, you know, the assets are being referenced from the folder spree front end all. That's basically the file that they use as the manifest file to include all the assets that is being called by the front end. Now, if you're familiar with assets pipeline, you should understand that very, very easily. If you don't, leave a comment in the, sec uh, in the section below and I will get to you and I will help you out with the assets pipeline stuff. And you can see the same thing with the JavaScript. So over here we have the CSS stuff, the, here we have the JavaScript. So what we have to do to override this is we have to follow this folder structure. So I'm gonna head back into Atom and I'm gonna create a folder called front end. And then I'm gonna create a new file called all.coffee. All right. So now, um, let's take a look. If we look at the, the JavaScript stuff, they're using jQuery, jQuery, UJS, and Spree here. So we will need to include um, this stuff because probably chances are some of the functionality depends on these things. Not a problem. So all we have to do is include jQuery into our uh, coffee file. So over here, I'm gonna do require jQuery. So now if I reload, it should take into effect the new assets file that we have. There you go. So take a look at that. Now it's got jQuery, jQuery UJS and Spree. Now we don't have as many assets because we're just including the ones we need and we'll add more as we go. So chances are some things are gonna break, but I'd rather have less in the beginning and add more as I go than just include everything without understanding what everything does. So I'm gonna leave this, uh, you know, JavaScript file here, just like this, because now we know that it's already taken into effect. Let's move on to the style sheet. So I'm gonna do the same thing, go into the new folder and create spring and new folder front end. And then I'm gonna create a uh, file called all.sass. So I'm gonna use sass for all my assets, all my CSS. And here, so before we can do the next thing, we need to install just like that. And just over here, I'm gonna do gem 
Bootstrap SAS. And then head over to the terminal. So I'm gonna close this out, do a bundle. To install Bootstrap. All right, so now I can start the app back up. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to import um, Bootstrap into my SAS file. So import Bootstrap sprockets, import Bootstrap. So if I do a reload on the page now, we should have the Bootstrap style uh, working. So I'm gonna do a reload over here. It's gonna take a while because it needs to recompile the assets. There we go. So you can see now that Bootstrap is now installed and working here. But in my preview, I showed you guys this logo here. Let's talk about that. So over here, uh, I'm gonna head over into, um, so if we head over to the header uh, in the source code here, we can see that we have a helper, uh, you know, Solidus is using this helper to render the logo. Now, the logo, uh, you know, if we want to customize it, we have to customize this method because if we go and take a look at the source code, uh, so I'm gonna head over into the core, app, helpers, spree, and then base helper. So this is the module that has the helper that has the logo source code. So over here, logo. What we really wanna do is we want to add, be able to add our own class, you know, like options for the image, like to control the width and the height. Um, because otherwise, you know, like, you know, how do I add a class? I mean, with, um, with Twitter Bootstrap, you can add classes to your images. But if we just use the default logo over here, we don't have, options we can just change the image that we want to use like just by putting the image path through the logo method but we can't add classes or do anything like that and if you look at my example over here and I do inspect element here you see that I have a class over here class IMG responsive and the width is 138 that is the size that fits into this bar perfectly how do we do that well with Solidus, what you can do is you can override this method here. And the way we do that is what we call decorators. So how do we do that? Well, let's jump into our source code. So I'm gonna wrap up this uh, Solidus source code here. Go into the helpers, I'm gonna create again, new folder, spree. And then what I'm gonna do is create a new file called base helper decorator. Now what I'm gonna do is module, spree, base, helper, end. And what I'm gonna do is go into the Solidus source code, go into the helper and copy the method I wanna override. So I'm gonna go down into, back into my source code here. And now, I will be able to use my own logo method to do all kinds of things that I wanna do. So the first thing I wanna do is be able to add some kind of options, like a class option to the image tag. So the way I do that is I have IMG options, and then it's just empty hash, that's the default value. And then here, I'm gonna pass in IMG options. So let's try this out. I'm gonna go over into the header, and what I'm gonna do is just copy this figure here and replace it here where it says brand in my Twitter bootstrap navbar. So I'm gonna replace this with the tag that came with the default header from Solidus. What I'm gonna do now is uh, use the option I just created, which is IMG options, and then class IMG responsive and then with 138. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna head over into this browser over here, do a reload real quick. And there we go, look at that. It's now using the Solidus logo provided by our helper. 
So you can see IMG responsive with 138. So that's how you would go about, you know, like overriding uh, and customizing methods and helper methods and setting up your own views uh, that you can customize, you know, based on how you like, like it's basically limitless. You have, you know, basically an empty canvas and you can implement it any way you like. And on top of that, it's separate from your actual Rails application. So you can have another application running while you have the free stuff, take care of the solid stuff, take care of all your e-commerce needs. That's amazing. Now, one tip I'm going to tell you guys here is when in doubt, use the source because everything is here. It's open source. That's a beautiful thing about open source is you guys can go into the source code, read the code and understand how it works. And then you can basically build on top of that on your own. And uh, if you understand Rails, it's very simple. Um, there might be a little bit of documentation to read here and there, but most of the stuff is in the source code. That's the beauty of open source. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a good one.